family in California quickly gathers its belongings, jumping into a car just in time as a raging wildfire consumes its home. Halfway across the world, a family in Bangladesh does the same, minutes before a massive flood carries away its home. A mother in Delhi puts a breathing mask on her son before sending him out into a thick fog of dust and smoke. A mother in Beijing does the same for her son. Fishermen in the Atlantic split open their sick fish only to find plastic rings in their intestines. Rangers in Kenya with rifles in hand stand by three northern white rhinos, the last of their kind. Welcome to 2019, ladies and gentlemen. We have a fundamentally abusive relationship with our planet and it is now bearing fruit. At the center of this relationship lies a deep disconnect between us and our natural world. A disconnect that has deepened over the history of our species as we have moved from farmers to city dwellers. We forgot where the food on our plates came from. We forgot where the water in our glasses came from. We forgot where the metals in our smartphones came from and we forgot where the rubber for our tires came from. We forgot that we are intertwined with the natural world, that we have a relationship with the natural world and most importantly, that we depend on the natural world. The natural world though, did not forget. Our society is now waking up to the unprecedented destruction it has wrecked in its own backyard and is finally starting to course correct. We are rapidly deploying clean energy across the world. We are recycling more plastic than ever before and are bringing electric vehicles into the mainstream. But this is not enough. Don't get me wrong, recycling plastic and deploying clean energy are absolutely critical for a greener and cleaner world. But they do not change what we want. Rather, they try and bring us what we have always wanted without completely destroying the environment in the, in the process. We have to change what we value because ultimately what we value dictates what we want and what we want dictates what the system that is the market or the government goes out there and gets us. Let me give you an example. If I value comfort and luxury while driving, I want a luxury car. And so the market goes out there and brings me a Mercedes or a Bentley or a Rolls Royce. On the other hand, if I value equality of all peoples, I want gender and racial equality. And so the government goes out there and brings me legislation to reduce inequality. Every single thing stems from what we value. What we value becomes what we want and what we want shapes the world. So how do we change what we value? How do we use that to fix this abusive relationship we have with our natural world? The answer lies in stories. Stories move us, they make us feel, and they make us relate. This changes what we believe, and that changes what we value. Think of the stories we all collectively know best as a society. I personally think back to movies like Schindler's List, which captured the horrifying tale of the Holocaust or books like George Orwell's 1984, which depicted a paranoid surveillance state, or even today's Black Mirror, which portrays a frightening technological dystopia. These are all art. Great art is part of the solution because great art is a powerful storyteller. It can make us cry, it can terrify us, and it can fill us with joy. All over people we will never meet and situations we will never witness. Great art tells great stories, and great stories stick in our heads. Great stories change what we believe, and great stories change what we value. Great art shines in making the abstract concrete, in making the unrelatable relatable. This makes it a particularly good storyteller for our natural world, a world that for most of us, let's face it, feels so out there, so far removed from our daily experience, that it's really hard to relate to, and that's why it's really hard to care about. I mean, after all, how often have we found ourselves walking through this concrete jungle, thinking of the actual jungle? And so what we need is a mass mobilization of the arts. We need to uplift brilliant artists and we need to unite them behind a common story, that we as a species depend on the natural world and that our fate is tied to its fate. Because ultimately, 
Every single thing stems from what we value. What we value becomes what we want, and what we want shapes the world. And the arts can make this change. They can make that difference. And the reason I know this is because they already have. It wasn't numbers on some spreadsheet or science in some obscure journal that captured the imagination of a little Indian kid in ninth grade. It was the inconvenient truth, a riveting work of art that set him on a path to dedicate his life to this cause, a path that has brought him to you today. So let us remember that the world of today was just built by people like us, and that it is up to us to shape what we want the world of tomorrow to look like. If we lead with our values, and if we value our natural world, we will build a rock-solid foundation for a better society that will last generations into the future. Thank you.